In this video, we're going to talk about memorization tips that I love and hate. Memorization is the number one skill that you need to have as an actor, but everybody learns a little bit differently. So I have a couple of tips that's going to help you with all of your senses. I'm an acting coach in New York City as well as an actor and I know how difficult it is to start a career in this industry and I just want to help you make it a little bit easier. Memorization is a muscle and the more you work it the stronger it will become. Even when you don't have a script in front of you, you should be practicing memorizing something so that it builds your confidence and you know when you're handed a script you can memorize it. Now I can tell you as somebody who went from theater to film and television, it is super easy for your muscle to start phasing away. So let's get into these tips. Know the story. Before you even start to work on memorization, you need to know the story front and back. You need to know the arc. What's the beginning, middle, and end of this piece that you have to memorize? It's going to make it a lot easier if you already know your objective, your obstacle, and what your character is going through. Okay, I swear by this one. Acronyms. Everyone who studies with me know that this is my favorite way to memorize lines. So you're going to take the first line. My first line is, and it looks like we're out of time. And I'm going to write it down as an acronym. So that's A-I-L-L-W-O-O-T. So when I look at it, I can see it's, and it looks like we're out of time. I'm going to do that with the next sentence. Gosh, that hour flew. G-T-H-F. Gosh, that hour flew. So you're going to transcribe the whole paper into a list of acronyms. Once you do that, you're going to put the regular script away and just look at the acronyms. Now, I swear by this, I have learned full scripts when I was doing theater, while I was teaching pre-K, only at work, and I tell you, it's super, super easy. Think about it, acronyms is how we learn a lot of things in schools. Why? Because it's scientifically proven to be an easy way to take you from point A to point Z in memorization. So why not use that science when we're memorizing our lines? You're gonna read through your acronyms a couple of times until you can look at those acronyms and really know what you are saying. Then you're gonna put the entire script down and see how far you can go. And repeat, repeat, repeat. Ah, that one just makes me so happy. All right, next is the read and repeat. So you're going to take the first line, and it looks like we're out of time. You're going to read it, and you're going to say it over and over again. And it looks like we're out of time. 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 If you can say it a whole bunch of different ways, that'll help you not cement it one specific way. Then you're going to get the second line. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. You add and repeat over and over and over again each time adding a new line. Write it down. Some people swear by this. They write down the sentence over and over and over again, then they write down two sentences, then they write down three sentences, then the four sentences, and you can do it over and over and over again, or you can just write your monologue over and over and over again. Guys, this never worked for me, but it may work for you. Let me know. Emotional cues. If you know what your character is going through, then it's really easy to take out the emotions and use that as a map. So you know after you get really angry, then you transition into sadness. And maybe there's a line that doesn't exist that you want to add as a thought that'll help you transition. Mind palace. It's all about attaching words to images. I mean, it looks like a lot of work to me, but it definitely looks like it would work. There's a whole video on it that I'm going to link below that was done by another YouTuber. It's awesome because it tells you a whole bunch about Shakespeare that I did not even know. So go check it out. It's just fun. Okay, here are my least favorite tips. Do they work? Yes. Will they make it very difficult for you to take direction and organically listen to your partner? Also, yes. But they work. And if you're just starting out or if you are cramming for something you need to memorize very quickly, we can do it.
Movements. I used to like this when I first started acting. The first line is, and it looks like we're out of time. I can go, and it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. That is my motion. So I know when I start, this is my first line. And it looks like we're out of time. Gosh, that hour flew. And you do that for the whole monologue. Now, if you have to do it per sentence, it might leave you a little robotic, but you can also decide not to do those motions after you've memorized it and only do the motions when you really, really need to remember the line. The other option is to break it up by beat, by different emotion, and give every emotion a different movement. Record yourself. This is great because you can do it anywhere. You can do it on the train or in the car or you're walking down the street or walk into class. But the issue is it makes it really hard for you to not memorize the emotion when you memorize the line. So there's a couple of different ways that you can record it. You can record your whole monologue or your whole scene and then you can listen to it or you can record it in chunks. So you can record the first three lines and then leave a space in the recording so that you can say those lines back out loud and then do the next few lines and then make another space. Um, another option is to use the app called Scene Study. I like this app whether or not you want to record yourself. It's really fantastic to record your partner's lines and then you can leave yours off or on mute so that you're rehearsing with this partner. The other issue with this is it trains you to respond to the line the way it's being said every single time and it doesn't really help you be organic and respond in the moment. But again, if you're at crunch time, it totally works. No matter what tip you end up using, make sure you run your lines every night and put it on your phone because you always have that. Thank you as always for watching. Make sure that if you learned something new today, you let us know in the comments below. And if I missed something, tell us. Don't be stingy, okay? Thanks so much and as always, wishing you love, like, and all that jazz. Like, comment.